we will begin in Exodus chapter 4. And I will read to you uh, two verses there, and I'll continue through the pages of Exodus for a, a, a short time before we uh, open in prayer and begin to preach in Exodus chapter 4, verses 22 and 23. And the Lord is speaking here, and he says, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. If thou refuse to let him go, behold, I'll slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Moving over to Exodus chapter 7. I'm sorry, uh, Exodus, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 8. Exodus chapter 8. The first verse. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Later in uh, verse 20, chapter 8, verse 20, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Chapter 9, verse 1, the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Verse 13 of chapter 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. In chapter 10, the book of Exodus, verse number 3. And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long will thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. Lord, this morning I pray that you'll be with us in this time. I ask you to give me help preaching. I ask you, Lord, to give us all, Lord, uh, a clarity of focus that we might hear, Lord, uh, with our ears, Lord, our spiritual ears that which you would preach to us this morning. And I pray you, Lord, give us all, Lord, a desire to do your word. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Now, I'll, what I would like to preach to you this morning consider, uh, is all concerning that word serve, how to serve, because we find in here uh, that the Lord wanted his people released from Pharaoh, but he wanted them released for a specific purpose, that they might serve him. Now, Exodus is the book uh, which teaches us about, of course, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt uh, and about Pharaoh being forced to release them. And we know that this speaks to our salvation. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, for we ourselves were under bondage and under the, the rulership, if you will, the lordship, uh, of the ruler and of this world, the king and the prince of this world. That is to say, we were under the hand of Satan and we were uh, servants of the devil and, and, and we did his will and he was a hard taskmaster. But thank God, thank God uh, that he came to set free the captives, that he came uh, to get us out of that land of bondage and he came to deliver us from that hard taskmaster. Uh, and indeed, he sent that gospel message down, let my people go that they may serve me. Uh, and so then, when, when he dealt with us, he was also, uh, if you will, not so much dealing with, but he was fighting against uh, Satan himself to remove us from his kingdom and translate us into his kingdom. Amen. Amen. When he delivered us, it was for a purpose. Just as the children of, of Israel were delivered for a purpose, they were delivered not simply to go free and to go into all the world and scatter everywhere, but rather to assemble themselves together as God's people and to serve him. Amen. And so we also were saved from the wickedness of this world and the rule of sin over us and our flesh. We might serve God. And so I would like to preach to you this morning on how to serve. For it's easy to say serve God. But then if you say, well, preacher, what do I do? I need an answer. How do you serve God? How do you serve God? If that's what he saved us for, then 
How do we do it? Well, I told you Exodus showed us our salvation. Now the last book of Moses, the first five books of the Bible are called the books of Moses, the Pentateuch, or, uh, the Torah, however uh, you may want to refer to them. But the last of them is the book of Deuteronomy. And Deuteronomy was where Moses gave the children of Israel their last instructions before they went in to possess the promised land. And, and that is to say, it looks forward to our instructions on how we take possession of our life on this earth. While we're still here, see, there was still warfare that went on in the promised yeah. land. There was still fighting that went on. And there's still warfare that goes on and fighting that goes on in our lives. But we are to take possession of our lives. And we are, uh, by the Spirit, to rule over the natural man. We are to drive out the enemies from among us. And so our instructions are found, if you will, in the book of Deuteronomy. There's a reason why it's... Uh, probably my favorite book in the whole Bible. It's definitely in the top three. Probably my favorite. I find all the instructions I need on how to live for God in the book of Deuteronomy. And here I'll turn to Deuteronomy 10. I'll ask you if you have your Bibles open. Turn with me. I want to read two verses. In the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter 10. And these are your instructions on how to serve God. This is everything you need to know on how to to serve God. And if you know this, and if you learn this, you will know what you are supposed to do. You will know how you're supposed to act, how you're supposed to live. You'll know what your role is upon this earth and if you're a child of God. In Deuteronomy in chapter 10, in verses 12 and 13, and I have them circled in my Bible. They mean that much to me. I like to be able to look over and see them and remind myself like I need reminded Often, it says, And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? The children of God, what does God require of you? What does he want from you? What's he asking of you? It says, But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. That's all God wants out of you. Now that's a lot. Don't, don't think that that was a small handful. You'll be living the last day of your life. You'll still be uh, trying your best to do this. This is, this is a handful. And I want to go through it with you because this is our instruction on how to serve God. And this is the reason he saved you and me was to serve him. The first thing it says is to fear the Lord. Now we've dealt with this phrase a lot uh, in the men's Sunday school classes. We went through Proverbs. Uh, it's inescapable. It's, it seems like it's all over. The fear of the Lord. And we know now and know well the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear Amen. of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Uh, until you fear the Lord, you're ignorant, you know nothing, and you're foolish. Amen. Uh, until you fear the Lord, you're, you're simply foolish and simple walking through this earth uh, knowing nothing as you think you know. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the beginning of knowledge. And there's good reason this was put as the very first instruction to us on how to serve the Lord. We must fear Him. If we fear Him, we will know our place before God Almighty. Amen. And where is your place and my place before God Almighty other than to be humble before Him? Never thinking anything of ourselves. There's a reason we can, that we can honor our neighbor more than we honor ourselves. It's because we think of ourselves as nothing. Now I know this flies in the face of, of all modern philosophy. Everything that's taught uh, in these days speaks of self-esteem. It speaks of having uh, a good opinion of yourself. It tells you to teach your children to be proud of themselves and so forth. But that's not what the Bible teaches and tells us. It tells us to esteem Him. It Amen. tells us to boast of Him. It Amen. tells us to think of ourselves as nothing. Uh, there's nothing I can do to please God without Him and without His help. That scripture that says that 
I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Because if you, uh, what it means when you think of it is I can do nothing to please Him, nothing without Him. Amen. I must have Him. I must be humble at the foot of God if I'm going to serve Him. After all, what would you think about a servant who sat on a throne while his master worked? That's just the wrong picture, isn't it? Right. That's backwards, isn't it? So then we don't sit around demanding of God. We don't pray to God saying, give me, give me, I won't, I won't. That's not our place before God. We call on Him for our needs. We call on Him for others. We call on Him <clears throat> that we might learn of Him. We come as a servant. We fear God. We fear Him because we are nothing and because He's everything. See, if there was someone else who is, was His peer, we would fear both of them. If there was someone greater than God, we wouldn't fear God, we'd fear who was greater than Him. We fear God because He's greater than everybody greater than every force, greater than everything. We fear Him because He is God Almighty. And so the first thing that is our duty as, as the blood-bought children of God is to fear God, know our place before Him, humble ourselves before Him, who alone is mighty. But the second thing it calls off is to walk in all His ways. Walk in all His ways. In that phrase, the word that I would like for you to consider is all. All. Work in all. Walk in all His ways. It is not difficult for you to clean up one area of your life. It's not hard. It's not hard for you. It's not difficult for you uh, to set forth three to five goals that, and, and things that you'll never do again in your life and stick by that. You don't even have to be saved to do that. There's been an awful lot of people who are just as lost as a ball in high weeds who had standards that they lived by and never violated. You don't even have to have the power of God to set forth three to five rules in your life and live by them. That's not what it's talking about. It says all his ways. That's right. All. What's called for, for you and I, is that our entire life be sanctified. That means set apart. That means made holy unto God. That means there is nothing in your life or mine that we reserve to ourselves. Do you hear me? I can't have my own private little corner of my heart and give the rest and say the rest of it's yours, Lord, but this little corner over here, that's mine. This over here, I love, and it's not yours. That is rebellion against God. Amen. But we're to walk in all His ways. Right. Have you ever heard the Word of God preached on any subject whatsoever? Knew you were wrong and failed to obey it. Because if so, you have not walked in all His ways. To serve Him, we must be obedient in everything that He tells us. Now, I tell you, there are some things that bother me more than they bother you. And I believe it's the same the other way. There are some things I cannot allow to be around me because they're a temptation to me. And I'm sure you have your things too. But where the Lord has told me, keep this away from you. Keep that away from you. Don't go there. This will cause you to fall. Stay away from that. Where he's gave me those instructions. And by the way, he's given them to me here inside me. And he's given them to you inside you in your heart. For after all, does not the Spirit of God indwell all who are his? And will he not speak to all of his? How can he say, my sheep know my voice if he didn't speak to all of them? 
And so then if I fail to heed his warnings, I'm not walking in all his ways. All. Well, that's pretty tough stuff. I want to move to the next one. I, I, I read right after. Fear, <laughs> fear the Lord thy God and walk in all his ways. And it says, and to love him. I said that last one was pretty tough stuff. But this one is the answer. This is how you can do it. You see, if, if your view of God is that he is cruel, if your view of God is that, that he's demanding and that he rules over you with an iron fist, then you will not, you will not surrender yourself wholly unto God. But you will draw back and you'll reserve something of yourself. The answer to how you can give yourself completely unto God is to love him. When you realize what He's done for you, when you realize how much He loves you, when you realize how wise He is and how He keeps you out of troubles and keeps you from, from doing things that harm yourself by His wisdom, you'll no longer consider it hard to follow Him in all His ways. But you'll desire all his ways if you love him people this is the answer if you're having a hard time keeping bitterness out of your life if you're having a hard time keeping greed from being your your ruling passion if you're having a hard time with the lust of this world overtaking you and following after the material things of this life then your love is not pure if your love for him is pure it'll drive these things out it will cause you to desire His ways. This is the answer for how you serve Him is to love Him. Amen. Love Him. Right. I, I've seen a lot of people that i worked with in different places, different jobs. Uh, and, and those who uh, hated their job never did it well. But those who loved their job you always wanted to keep around and be around and have around. They were, they were, they, they were those who, who did it well. And, and if you are dreary at this thing of, of being a Christian, if it causes you uh, despair, then I'll tell you, you'll never serve God effectively. But if you love Him, and it doesn't take much to love Him, if you look upon Him on that cross, and look what He suffered for you, and you'll look at him as the risen Savior and see what he's promised unto you who will have him. You'll love him. You'll love him. This is where your strength lies. Boy, I could stay there. But I want to read the rest of this. we got two whole verses on what you must do to serve him. Fear the Lord thy God to walk in all his ways and to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And again, we come to this word all. All. Nothing held back. You know, if you look up this word in, in Hebrew, this word all, and you look it up in Hebrew, do you know what it means? It means all. Yeah. It means all. It means exactly what it means. The Lord wants your heart. He wants you. He wants everything about you. He wants everything in your life. He wants you to communicate with Him about everything in your life. You don't have to hide anything from God. You can look at Him in the morning or the evening around your house or out in the yard or wherever you're at and say, Lord, I, I am miserable. Lord, I, I, I don't like... I don't even like the way I answered that. I don't like the way I just spoke to somebody. I don't like what I just did. You can tell him. I mean, he already knows. Why hold anything back from God? Why not talk to him honestly? Why not reveal to him who already knows your whole heart, your whole soul? Why not give him all? Why not say, Lord, here I am at this part I don't like. This part, I know there's, there's a problem over here. I know I've got a grudge. I, I know I've got hatred. I know I've got envy. I've got jealousy over here. I, I've got a problem over here. Give that as well. Hold nothing back and tell them all. 
Is not the one and only God your creator? Is he not capable of healing those areas in your heart where you've got a problem? Why hold them back? Love them with all your heart. With all your soul. That means on a Tuesday morning when all of a sudden you got a day off you didn't know you was going to have. What do you think about doing? Serving yourself or serving God? When you have an afternoon off, have you ever thought about giving up the afternoon's entertainment and going out visiting your neighbors? Have you ever thought about going out and letting your light shine before this world and doing good instead of staying home and, and entertaining your own flesh? Why not serve Him with all of your heart and all of your soul? Why not go out and find somebody and talk to them about the gospel even though you don't know them? The gospel is for more than our immediate family and our best friends. It's for all the world. You said it takes a lot of time. It sure does. But why not serve them with all your heart and all your soul? Why not go down to the hospital one day and visit somebody? Go over to the nursing home, visit somebody if you can. Why not go and do God's work? Serve them with all your heart, all your soul. I heard that today the children in Sunday school were writing notes to the missionaries to send to them. I think that's a wonderful thing. Amen. You know, I think grown-up folks can do that too. Yep. Most of them have prayer cards out there that have their birthdays and anniversaries on them. And you know, you can go to the store and buy a birthday card and send it in the mail all by yourself. <laughs> you can do the work of God on your own because you love Him with all your heart and all your soul Amen. and you just want to serve him. And it says to keep the commandments of the Lord and the statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. Now in fairness when, uh, when Moses was speaking to the Jews he was given the Mosaic law but you and I as far as I know we're all born Gentiles in here None of us were ever under the Mosaic law. We're not required uh, to follow the dietary law of, of, of Israel. But we are still given commandments by the Lord Jesus Christ. And did he not promise that he would write his law on our hearts? And has he not burned in your heart before to tell you where to go, what to do, what to say, things to talk about? Has he not told you not only the things to stay away from, but the things to love and to draw yourself unto. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. This is how you serve. You yield yourself because you of your flesh are not able. You're not able. I'm not, you're not. You're made out of the same dirt I am. You're not able and I'm not able. To keep the commandments of God in your flesh. It's not possible. But it is possible by the Spirit of God in you. It is possible by the Word of God given unto you. It's possible by the power of God that you can keep those things which He has commanded you in your heart. Which He's told you. When He's told you love that person over there who's sick, who's feeble. When he's told you, go help them, it's possible for you to do it. When he's told you, go say something, it's possible for you to speak up. When he tells you, don't say anything, it's possible for you to shut up. Whatever it is that God commands in the hearts of his children, it's possible for us to do if we love him. If we love him. And I tell you, of everything that we've, everything we've preached this morning, on how to serve God. That is what makes it all possible. You can serve Him if you love Him. You can fear Him. You can dedicate yourself completely. Be sanctified in all areas of your life. Love Him with all your heart, all your soul. Do all of His commandments if you'll simply love Him.